uh, welcome to this particular module and uh, we will be learning in this module what are tissue and cell culture techniques. So, it is very important because uh, for our course electronic system for cancer diagnosis we need to understand um, how the cancer occurs in, in, uh, uh, in a human body right and what exactly a cancer is. So, when you will understand in detail what exactly cancer is you will find that uh, it is nothing but a group of cell dividing unevenly and that causes the problem uh, in a human body all right. So, uh, when we talk about uh, cell dividing unevenly what exactly we mean right and how you are culturing those cells how you get a culture within the body. So, what is the environment within the body and how we are how the cells accumulate together to form a tissues how tissues accumulate together to form a organ right. So, let us see today what a cell means and then few cell culture techniques or you can say tissue culture techniques when I say culturing that means that you are culturing in the laboratory all right. So, there are uh, several terms that we will be learning today uh, uh, one of those terms is called in vivo techniques the another one is called ex vivo techniques and the final one is called in vitro techniques. So, we will we'll learn how those techniques are and uh, how we can take advantage of the existing cell and tissue culture to learn about the progression of cancer and to learn about how we can design electronic system if we want to address the problem uh, which are tissue related cancers all right. So, with that particular goal uh, let us start our this particular module and uh, uh, like I said we are here interested in understanding tissue and cell culture techniques. So, when you talk about tissue and cell culture techniques it is a combination of engineering is a combination of biology is a combination of medicine ok. Uh, so, when you talk about engineering and biology and medicine that combination is very interesting because you can talk about cell engineering you can talk about bioreactor you can talk about how to monitor and control you can understand what is cell stability and selection you can understand what exactly a tissue engineering means and then you can understand how you can design therapeutics and diagnostic devices if you know all three things or if you link all three things together all right. Uh, so, finally, understanding uh, about biology and medicine will help us to design a novel electronic systems for uh, for curing or for diagnosing cancer that is the idea right. Uh, that is why we are understanding this as a uh, introductory class. So, that we understand how the cell looks like how the tissue looks like and how can we take uh, how can we fabricate devices fabricate microchips fabricate electronic systems or a uh, integrate electronic systems all together to understand the tissue properties. So, if you see the uh, the uh, where exactly the cell originate in 19 in 1665 Robert Hooke used a microscope to examine a thin slice of cork uh, dead plant cells and what he saw look like small boxes you can see here right in this particular image it looks like small boxes placed together is not it. And at that time uh, the the monk used to live in uh, in a small uh, uh, area uh, which well uh, similar to this kind of boxes uh, uh, and they used to call them cells and that is how Hooke uh, came up with the naming of this small boxes as cells as they look like the small rooms that monks lived all right. So, that is how the name originated when you look at the details of the of a single cell what you will find you will find a microfilaments inside the cells you can find a centriole you can find a nucleus 
you can understand ribosomes, there are lysosome, there is Golgi apparatus, there is endoplasmic reticulum, right? there is macrochondrion, there is smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So, lot of structure formulates a cell, all right. The, the interesting is the nucleus, how we will know if I, if I take the uh, number of cells, let us say if I take number of cells and I place on the glass slide, how you know whether all this dot looking structures are cells or not, right. Suppose I take uh, using cytology, okay. so if you remember uh, the 5 minutes introduction class, I told about a word called cytology, hmm. studying of cells. Right. So, if you want to study let us say oral cancer, then you need to take out cells from the, from the mouth. When you take out the cells and you smear the cells, what do you do? Smear S M E A R. When you take out the cells and smear the, smear the cells, you will see like this. Okay. Now, the question is how you are sure that all these dots are cells or there are debris or there are bacteria, how will delineate these cells from the debris and other things all right. That is where the nuclear staining helps us. All right. So, you can do a nuclear staining and you will see that when you stain the nucleus of a cell with a marker called DAPI, D A P I, you will see that this nucleus within the cell, this nucleus will turn blue. Okay. Uh, you can see a red dot because my pen is red, but uh, when you stain the cell with DAPI, you will see that the nucleus turns to blue. That means that, that if I have a glass slide with some dots and if I stain the cells with DAPI, then I would distinguish or delineate the cells from debris and other organisms. right? because I can see clearly the cells amongst these other particles would the nucleus will turn blue in color, will turn blue in color. Okay. So, that is uh, something that we need to understand uh, when you talk about the cells. Now, let us go to the next slide. Right. So, so, the point is that when you open the cell, you can see lot of things within the cell. Then the most important thing from engineering perspective is that what we will do if cell consists of so complex things, right? what we want to do is, what we have to understand is that yes, the cell constitutes of lot of this particular technical names microfilament and nucleus and ribosomes and lot of other things, but the chemical composition within the cell sodium, potassium right. That if the cell is lysed, lysed is when the cell dies, when the cell ruptures right, then this chemical comes out and these chemicals are conductive that is where our interest lies. So, let, let me give an example why, why it is really important uh, from engineering perspective. Okay. So, if I have a material and I can measure a impedance right impedance or resistance let us say resistance is inversely inverse of conductivity correct. More conductive uh, uh, material is the less its resistance value right or higher the resistance value less the conductivity. So, what I want to tell you is that if you have cells all right, 
and if the cell ruptures, if the cell lies, what will happen? The chemical within the cell will come out. When the chemical within the cell comes out, the conductivity increases. So, how can we use it? What, what is there for us? Right. So, the interesting thing is if I load a drug on a group of cells and if the drug is effective, then the cells would lies and the conductivity would increase. So, if I can design a sensor which can measure the conductivity of cells and when the cell is lysed, then I can understand whether the drug is effective or not. That means, I can understand the efficacy of a drug. That means, that I can do a drug screening. So, for drug screening using the conductivity, we can design a device right that we will see as a part of this course and I will tell you how quickly we can design this drug screening device very easy a simple property of conductivity right. Now, you cannot measure resistance in this case because the cells are capped in a drug and if you understand that it is not resistance now because there is a double layer capacitance involved when you design a device on which you are putting the cells, you cannot just rely on DC uh, current or resistance, you have to rely on impedance because lot of parasitic effect would come into picture. So, we will see coming back to our uh, cell theory. So, the beginning of the cell theory uh, in 1839, a German zoologist named Theodore Squan concluded that all animals were made up of cells and he also co-founded the cell theory right. What he found that all the animals right you talk from uh, humans, chimpanzees, snake, frog, fish talk about anything right were made up of cells ok. Good. So, what happened in 1855? In 1855, a German medical doctor right named Rudloff observed under the microscope cells dividing alright, very interesting observation and he reasoned that all cells comes from other pre-existing cells by the phenomenon called cell division alright. So, the cell division is responsible for forming other cells. So, from where the cell comes? From the pre existing cells, all right. So, this was the uh, observation by Dudloff Wilchow, a German medical doctor in 1855, ok. So, if you further understand, if you take a cell which is right shown here, all living things are made up of cells right. Cells are the basic unit of structure of a function in an organism and it is a basic unit of life. Cells comes from the reproduction of existing cells and that is you with the cell division. When you understand within the cell you will see that there are hydrophobic region of protein, there are hydrophilic region of protein there is a phospholipid bilayer and molecules in the cell membranes are constantly moving and changing. Additionally, those proteins also help move larger molecules or aid in cell recognition. Now, within the, the proteins we divide proteins into two subdivision. The first one we call peripheral proteins and second one we call integral proteins. So, what are peripheral proteins and what are integral proteins? Peripheral proteins are attached on the surface inner or outer while the integral proteins are embedded completely through the membrane. So, recently if you read research papers uh, you will find that lot of groups 
are working on introducing the drug within the cell or they say nano particle loaded drug nano particle loaded drug all right so what's the purpose of this it's very interesting uh, idea and uh, like i said lot of research groups are working on this so the point is here you see uh, when a drug enters the cell all right how much time a drug can stay within the cell how much time a drug can stay within the cell is called influx the time at which the cell, the drug is thrown out of the cell is called efflux influx efflux right now why drugs is drug is thrown out of the cell because drug is not the part of a cell right so how fast the drug is thrown out now the drug is thrown out quickly so the efflux is faster then the effect of the drug on to the cell would be minimal right but if i create a drug within a nanoparticle and the nanoparticle is made up of lipid or phospholipid so i cover the phospholipid around the drug and i introduce that nanoparticle loaded drug into the cell what will happen by lipid or phospholipid is a part of the cell right so now this uh, the efflux will reduce the time that is thrown out right is now less that means that more time a drug can stay within the cell the more time the drug can stay within the cell it will start acting on the cell and it will start rupturing the cell and thus the treatment becomes more effective that's what i meant by nanoparticle loaded drug see interesting right same thing very interesting now we, in the, in the brain there is something called blood brain barrier okay so the drug cannot pass through lot of the, to, through this barrier and that's why we have to reduce the size of the drug to nanoparticles so that it can diffuse through the uh, through the gaps available in this particular blood brain barrier but the question is how to improve the influx or how to reduce the efflux right so very interesting point here is that brain consists of what it consists of stem cells all the star all the things starts from the stem cells right so it's a brain stem cells or we can say neural stem cells neurons right so a group of neurons so neural stem cells neural stem cells causes a new formation of new neurons with the exon and, and further there are a lot of subdivisions within a brain also this is a to different topic of uh, research right now what we are talking is if i can load the neural stem cells with drug and i introduce those neural stem cell loaded with drug for treating the uh, disease related to brain like brain cancer can we improve the influx or can we reduce the efflux that means the time that the drug can stay more time within that neural stem neurons question right and that can be a neural stem cells as a novel drug delivery mechanism for treating brain cancer can we use that right and if we can how can we do that so anything boils down finally to what are the cells right and that's why we need to understand cells and that's why this particular module so if you come back uh, to the ppt what we find is 
we have seen cell theory, we have seen how the beginning of cell theory was there, we, we have seen the structure of the cells and we have seen the uh, how the cell and tissue culture can be used right. Now, in our next module what we will learn? We will learn what are the cell culture or what is the cell culture. Now, we understand basic thing which is what is cells or what are cells right a little bit of cell theory and I told you two three different words remember it influx efflux in vivo ex vivo in vitro right and we saw that the conductivity of the cells right or the or the media or, uh, would increase if you lies the cell if the cell dies and that phenomenon we can use for drug screening to understand efficacy of a drug. We also uh, discussed that we can use we can load the drug within a uh, uh, biological sample or you can say nanoparticle uh, such that the efflux would decrease or the time that a drug can spend within the cell would increase. In the next module let us see what is the cell culture and what are the techniques uh, or equipment used for cell culture. Till then you take care have fun see you.